thank you, Michael, for sitting down with me today. Thanks for having me. We're here in Pine Mountain, Georgia, for the 2019 meeting of the National Association of Plant Breeders. Last time we caught up with you was in 2017. You were the vice chair of the Plant Breeding Coordinating Committee, mm -hmm. if I have that correct. You're now the chair of the committee. There's some very exciting changes going on. But before we get to that, last time we caught up with you, we asked you what your favorite book was. You said The Phantom Tollbooth. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite movie? Well, so w w when I initially heard you were going to ask me that question, I, uh, it was actually really hard for me. Uh, really, I like almost any comedy. But uh, I realized uh, actually what I like more than movies is TV. So what, I'm, what, what I really love now are these um, more the long form uh, stories like you get in Netflix or Hulu where you can really get your kind of bin, binge watching in. And um, uh, one that I just I thought was fantastic that I, that I really liked a little bit of a darker comedy was that the Netflix series Get Shorty. I remember the movie from from uh, back in the day. And, John Travolta. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, and uh, and and now they 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 redid it, and oh, it was just it was it was so much fun to watch. <laughs> you know, re really anything that really can get that kind of uh, you know a good kind of out loud laugh, I really really like. <laughs> well, it's interesting how Netflix and platforms like that to really change the face of entertainment. Mm -hmm. You don't have to wait until eight o'clock tonight to see your favorite show. You can watch it anytime you want. Oh yeah, and it's and it's it's a really and and it's nice to, um, you know, in some ways getting back to um, thinking about plant breeding, thinking about academics. You you get to see kind of more of that real long form story, and it it also reminds me a little bit more of, of books. Oh, now there's eight episodes that that you know, you know, as opposed you know you get four times the amount of time to to tell a story as you do as you do in a movie it's different formats but but it's uh it, it still feels very much like a movie i think a lot of those shows well it's interesting to compare that to plant breeding these new technologies that make things more efficient yeah. make it easier and that's one of the topics this year like we heard last mm -hmm. night at the opening session crispr new breeding yeah. technologies as i said we're here at napb 2019 ninth annual meeting highest attendance mm -hmm. it's ever had What's the highlight of the meeting for you this year? Well, well to me, I really love all of the um, the, the the talks on the um, from the from the recently funded grants by the USDA because it, you really get to see really kind of what what is the cutting edge, what are people really trying, and all the things that might be the new best technology, something that we can also implement, um, you know, in my lab at a smaller school, because you don't have to go in at scale. You know, there's there's a lot of really um, great technologies uh, that, that you can apply, but it's tough to apply them when you're in a small lab. But a lot of, a lot of these uh, um, new pilot projects, new technologies that are uh, kind of uh, implemented at a small scale, I, you know, it's, it's so much fun to hear like, okay, oh, maybe I get to try this one next time. Or maybe this is the technique that, that they've found a way to make it cheap enough that I can just try and pilot it in, in my lab, which is, um, because like I said, you know, the, uh, a lot, it's great to hear what, what industry is doing and they're doing great stuff, but I can't mobilize those type of resources. Um, so it's nice to see what people are doing more on the shoestring budgets. Speaking of your lab, what's new at the moment? What's coming out of that? So uh, my lab is continuing to do a, a lot of work on um, working with land races, uh, working in pre-breeding, and re really working, trying to think about adaptation to climate change. Um, so, so we're doing more work. Uh, we, in the past, we've done work in um, trying to identify uh, genetic variants associated with the adaptation to climate change. We're, we're continuing that work um, uh, in, in uh, a, a number of species, most, most notably pepper. But uh, what we're also trying to do is take a little bit of a different spin on, on uh, breeding in, in some ways. We're trying to figure out um, the smallest possible breeding program that will be self-sufficient. Um, so what we're trying to do is figure out, um, is, is, is working with uh, community partners, figuring out okay, what exactly do you need? How much of a market can this particular um, cultivar support? And is it something that you guys would actually buy? So nothing new, but just kind of a, 
a twist, you know, try, trying to hit a single instead of a home run. Like I said, last time we caught up with you was in 2017. Yep. That was a couple years ago. What's yep. been the biggest change in your life since then, either personally or professionally? Um, well, I, I would think that the, the biggest the biggest change is uh, re really um, uh, feeling more like an actual professional. Um, in, in 2017, I just started at, um, I, in, in 2016, I started at University of Hawaii. So I was just a little bit more than a year in, in 2017. And um, in a lot of ways, I, I, I still uh, felt like a student. Um, and, and now um, I'm, uh, I, I don't feel like a student. I don't, you know, feel fully like a professor yet, but it, you know, getting there, it feels more like, um, uh, you, you just, uh, you know, I, I don't really feel new, if that makes any sense. And that's, uh, you know, that's, it, it's nice. It lets, it, it provides a certain amount of flexibility when, when talking to people and it allows, um, it, 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 in a lot of ways it's fun because you can come up with some wackier ideas and be like, oh, let's try it. And people don't laugh at you. And, and, and it, it lets you be a little bit more creative, which I think is a lot of fun. Can you give us a quick snapshot to 411 on what the PBCC is and why it founded the NAPB? Right. So PBC, the, the PBCC is what's known as a multi-state hatch project. And not to get too deep in the weeds, but essentially uh, the, the U.S. government has a system of land-grant universities. Many other countries have this system as well. And what that means is each state gets a certain amount of federal funding to do agricultural work. And they also want to encourage states to work together. And that's where these multi-state projects come together. And the PBCC is one such multi-state project that is 100% focused on public plant breeding. And so what that means is, because it's a, a, an organization that's run through the federal government, there are certain limitations on what, what the PBC can do. So for example, PBCC can do no direct lobbying. But what it can do is it can answer questions. So Congress or members of uh, um, uh, members of Congress, members of uh, federal agencies can ask PBCC que specific questions on what things are to get clarification or to get answers. And, and so it's a different type of communication channel than, say, a professional society like um, uh, like NAPB, who can do direct lobbying for for various um, for thing for things that that uh, you know we as the National Association of Plant Breeders really feel are important. There's there's also slight differences on the the, the, the membership. So while PBCC any any uh, person who is affiliated with a um, uh, yeah, an egg experiment station or affiliated with a state institution can be um, or a non-state institution, anyone can be a member, but uh, only uh, each state can only have one designated voting member through the Ag Experiment Station. And of course, international members are uh, aren't allowed to be voting members. And these are just federal laws based on the way that the project is uh, uh, is set up. Um, but but it uh, again, PBCC is a nice. It provides an opportunity for again, especially um, younger professionals, um, more starting their careers, to do a lot to kind of check off all the boxes for um, th that. That um, again, in the public sector, that are a big deal. It checks off, you know, your service box. It's a it's a volunteer national organization that 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 where you're working with uh, your peers in the field. You uh, PBCC has been successful in getting federal grants to run various conferences and workshops. Um, uh, P PBCC uh, publishes papers. And, um, and, and PBCC, um, uh, again, is, is a, is a, since it's a multi-state organization, you're working with um, and, and have an opportunity to um, figure out exactly what other states are doing, which is a very, you know, again, very helpful when you're starting your own breeding program. It may not be in the species that you did your, uh, your, your uh, graduate work in. And so you have to be a little bit creative. Um, 
because it may uh, be, be because uh, your way of doing things in your species for your graduate program might be very different when you've now moved shifted to this new this 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 new this new species or this new location with with different um, you know different strengths and different challenges. Well, and speaking of feeling like a professional, you've got a big job this year. You're the incoming chair mm -hmm. of the Plant Breeding Coordinating Committee, which actually founded the NAPB. Mm -hmm. I understand there's something new, exciting going on with the PBCC right now. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah. So, so the PBCC, which is one of the, um, which is uh, run out of the uh, uh, agricultural experiment stations. Um, so there's we actually have members in uh, 46 of the 50 states. We can have members from every state. We can have members, actually international members. Um, but uh, they, uh, but it is part of the mandate of all the 50 states to do this. Every five years, we have to decide what our new objectives are for for um, moving forward. How we how are we going to promote plant breeding? How are we going to ensure that we continue with this very fundamental discipline to, uh, you know, to, to human survival, really? Um, and and so so we're in the process now of drafting our new objectives, trying to find people who want to take these on, and uh, we have uh, different response. While there's a lot of mission overlap, we have different responsibilities, and we have a slightly different. Uh, um, way of, of having objectives and deliverables than, than NAPB because the PBCC is all about the public sector. So um, there's certain things that we will always do. We will always try and identify um, what capacity we have for plant breeding, you know, keep track of all of the plant breeders uh, across the country in the public sector. Um, we uh, are always uh, going to care about germplasm. You know, that's our base. And, and we're always going to worry about, you know, telling people about plant breeding. We're plant breeders. We love it. But we need we want to make sure everyone knows and cares about it. So, so those three things are kind of set. But beyond that, we have a lot of room to do new things. Uh, uh, we've, uh, you know, in the past, we worked on intellectual property. We've worked on public-private partnerships. We've done, uh, we've worked on educational goals. We've worked uh, very specifically on on um, specific communication goals, you know, in terms of trying to get out success stories or trying to figure out ways of better interacting on a video interview or something like that. But 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 we're really open to trying to figure out what those best objectives are, um, and what we're one of, one of the things that we have is we can have these discrete deliverables, which makes PBCC really great for um, uh, y y y uh, assistant professors and new professionals to work in because you know one of the goals of all of the um, uh, w one of the PBCC goals is to document these process publish papers that then folks uh, can take back to their university administrations can can give to their students to say this is the way that it's being done and that uh, organizations, like NAPB can then use to go and talk to uh, uh, decision makers, uh, elected officials, and, and people like that. And say, look, the 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 we have this uh, peer-reviewed publication that can that backs up what we're saying. So, in, in a lot of ways, we can do this research that enables uh, organizations like NAPB to more effectively make the case. To uh, to um, you know lawmakers why plant breeding is so important. Before I let you go, one last question: When your term as PBCC chair is up in twelve months, what's the one thing you hope you'll have accomplished? Well, what I what, what I really want to see is uh, I I want to I want to uh, expand. Uh, the, the number of people who are actively involved. And so, so what I mean by that is I want to, what my goal is, I, I want every, uh, every one of those 46 people who are part of, uh, the, the, who are the voting members of the PBCC 
to feel attached to one of our objectives. And, and I want to set it up so all of those 46 members that after we set up our renewal, that all of those 46 members can feel like, oh, I want to be on one of the papers that are going to come out and then continue to use that to integrate with NAPB, right? Because what we can provide them with the, that, uh, we can have these discrete deliverables in the form of here's our, you know, uh, here's our peer reviewed paper with data that you guys want that you can then use as as the professional organization to really talk to um, you know uh, to talk to talk to the people who matter and who can really uh, help us make sure that plant breeding stays healthy you know and 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 make that easy for people because we want people to stay plant breeders we want people to not get discouraged and feel that, well, I'm doing all this work, but but who who cares? And people do care, but we need to have those tools and that way to, to let everyone know. Best of luck. Thanks for sitting down with me today. Thank you, Mark. It was a lot of fun.